Just a firm no. It sounds like uh, sounds like you're swearing a little bit. Hey, so we're just going to share a couple of quick things. When we were thinking about this service, our hope was really, and if I'm too loud, somebody can feel free to turn me down. I don't know what it feels like out there, but um, we really wanted to primarily have this be about encouragement and praise and worship and celebration, which every year means we talk less and less and less about because... Uh, that's not our that's not our forte. So we just let everyone else do that. So Susanna, thank you so much for leading our time and testimony. Amy, thanks for coming for all the way from Westerville to lead us. This has been great. Um, we are just really quickly. We're going to share uh, five things, five on five, uh, five years of Delco, five lessons that we've learned uh, of church planting, church ministry over the last five years. And I have no other way to intro it except to go to the first one. You want to start? We've planned this. It's funny. I guess you got to do it all time. It's super funny. Oh, if you can unmute the other one too. Seven, eight, and five, six. You good? Am I good? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, so we we had a whole list of things we brainstormed. We kind of whittled it down to five. Maybe we'll do an extra podcast release of that extra ones. I don't know. But... Essentially, this one, we just wanted to celebrate you all. So we're just going to go through and celebrate the different individuals who help make the gathering, this family possible at an administrative level and leadership level, all sorts of ways. So I'll, we can just go back and forward. First, we want to celebrate Seth and Zoe for the work that they've put in for kids curriculum Let's on go. Sundays. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then for a while now, our kids' point person has been our own Maddie Crassa. And she's done a great job. Oh, she's gone. Well, applaud Maddie when, she, when you see her. Because, is this math right? 23 of our 70 people are children. Yes. That's Which a lot. Which is awesome. That's a lot. That's great. Chelsea's been organizing food, and we kind of did a tally between meals on Sundays, meal trains, and small groups, we think our church has made over 100 meals for each other this past year, easily. So, Chelsea, thank you for that. We have written here the queen of gathering, which is Caroline Pusateri. Yeah. <laughs> she said that we don't just love her for what she would do, but do you notice that we make her do a lot? <laughs> All the Kidmen volunteers, and especially those who are volunteering in kids' ministry who don't actually have kids. Last week, Adam and Maisie were in the kids' room. Randy's like going, yeah, they rocked it in there. So thank you all, Kidsmen volunteers. Uh, everyone who's made a meal, which I think is pretty much everybody. Uh, so give yourself a round of applause. It's a great thing. <laughs> With the, we've mentioned this earlier, but there's a developing governing board that's kind of being put together. And in addition to Jordan and I, that's the Perrys, Brad, and Caroline. So they carry this church in prayer. Um, we're actually been gathering for prayer once a month before church just to pray for this community and for our city. So thank you guys. This last year we had a group that went through soul care together and I heard it was a wild ride, uh, but it was led by the French Sosas and the Perrys and we just wanted to thank them for putting that together. And the G's have been leading healing care groups this year, so shout out to them. Which I've also heard have been very wild. Mallory is at this moment doing photography for our church and she does that on a whim. So thank her for all the pictures she takes. We're grateful for Jesse Brown and we'll thank the whole Brown family because it impacts all y'all when Jesse's helping facilitate worship. So Zoe, kiddos, thank y'all, thank you Jesse. We love our partners with the Dream Center and with Young Life. And so the Gordons are gonna be here today, they can't make it, but we do have the freeze in the back. Even though they were gone for most of the summer, we still love them. Thank you to the Bears and Crosses as they regularly open their homes for small groups to happen. So thank you guys. The number of people who shared testimony this past year was 25 of us. 25 people opened their hearts on our Sunday worship, and that's just a super cool thing. That is our hope and our joy. So thank you guys for that. 
And then we've had nine different people in this church community preach on a Sunday this past year. So thank you guys for your voices and lending that for the discipleship of our church. I would bet money that's the largest in our district by a long <laughs> shot. By like a long shot. <laughs> so all that to say, I'll wrap this one up and Jordan can start the next one. But when we think of Delco, the church, we do not think about the five different locations we've gathered in. We think about you all. And the Lord, just as much as you have gifted and blessed each other, uh, I can speak on Jordan and Hope's and Randy's behalf, I think you guys have incredibly blessed us. So thank you for journeying, journeying with us here in this city. Amen. Hey, the second thing that we wanted to talk about, we've learned, discipleship is a slow burn. It's not a sparkler. About how long does a sparkler last? I don't know, like 10 seconds? I don't know. We tried to give our kids sparklers once, we immediately regretted it. But it, even that, it felt like a long time, but it's not a long time, which is not what discipleship is. Uh, a fun fact that I feel like I've learned is that, by and large, life just keeps going. I don't know if you've ever thought like, hey, once it gets to this thing, or if this terrible thing happens, or even if this good thing happens, I don't know what life is gonna be like on the other side of that, and then you get there, and then life just keeps going. Everybody just keeps living their lives like it's totally normal. Uh, I say all that to say that uh, when the best things or worst things happen, when good things happen, the question always becomes, and this is the sustaining part, what kind of person are we going to be as we keep walking down the road, right? It's not about the events. It's not about the disaster or whatever. How many times do we hit that wall before Jesus's words in Matthew 10 where he says whoever finds their life will lose it and whoever loses their life for my sake will find it really hit home right he's certainly talking about eternity but he's just as certainly talking about right now today right the life that we live now our best life whatever that means is on the other side of putting down and sacrificing what we think our lives should be or needs to be, or has to be. And that really is how Jesus framed what discipleship is. At least, that's our hope. Uh, so whatever Delco is to you, which I'm super blessed by our testimony time, or whatever we are to you as leaders, we at least know that this is only part of your story. And we try to treat it that way. We don't try to manipulate people to be here forever. We don't try to like keep you so that we feel better. We just know that we're part of a story. And that's true for us too. Uh, I have no idea what happens in the next chapter. I really don't. I wish I had more certainty. It would be awesome if I did. I really don't. But I do have a really good idea of the kind of person Jesus would like us to be when we get to that next chapter. Right? That's the one thing that we get to really hold on to as a through line. And so we hope that it does feel like a slow burn. That at least in the midst of the things that seem hard or good, you are you, right? And you're being made into something new. Yeah, and that process of following Jesus really often is a slow burn. Uh, and another fun fact is important things often grow slowly. That's why I think Jesus uses so many agriculture plant metaphors throughout all of his parables, right? And we don't often, honestly, we probably don't talk about numbers enough, but I can't tell you how many times, like, as a leader, we've had to look at our budget at the end of the year, and we're like, I don't know how the Lord's going to make fix this. And we, like, want him to fix it like a sparkler like that, right? And... I mean, literally a year ago, we looked at each other, we looked at our developing team, we're like, I, we're gonna sink by the end of the year. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's gonna happen. But the Lord, in this, in this way that is almost so slow you can't even notice, the Lord has provided even just financially for our church, and not just from outside means, but by developing the hearts of generosity within our church community. Our church, is, this church community is actually giving like last year we were averaging giving 2900 a month from in the body and that has jumped to 4900 just in a year that's both from people giving more and more people giving and that's and just that, because you donate everything you make yes i just i'm like i gotta get that number <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> no it <laughs> man that that's direct that's, that's good um 
we're grateful for what the Lord, it's just evidence of what the Lord is doing in your all's hearts. Other numbers is, as Jordan said, about 70 people call our church home. We have, so 23 of those kids, we have 19 people, like adults in small groups. We have four who currently are in a healing care group, five who finish a healing care group. We had about five to six, and additionally to the Perrys and Frensoses earlier this year in soul care. And it's just, again, I'm not celebrating it just because people are in small groups. I hope that is evidence that you guys also believe that discipleship is a slow burn and that by showing up in those environments, Jesus is shaping you into his likeness and preparing you to represent him over the long haul. So thank you all. Number three, leadership is guided by God and not by ego. Uh, I was reflecting on this. There's kind of an implicit myth to leadership that largely by being a leader, you get to make decisions and then see your vision come to reality because it's the thing that you want because you can tell people what to do. And uh, in fact, that's why a lot of people leave a church to plant another church because they say something like, well, if I were in charge, we'd do X, Y, and Z. And I hate to break it to all of my fellow Jesus-loving rebels, but that literally never happens. It does not work. And it's not true of the leadership of Jesus at all. Uh, all you have to do is lead in your own strength and wisdom for a really short season and see the results, the hurts, the reactions, and you will begin to question everything you think you know about leadership, all of those incredible ideas that are based on your super smart thinking and all of that stuff. Uh, it comes to a head pretty fast. And it has for us so many times, so many times. Yeah, I, I would encourage you all even maybe to relate to this as parents, is how often do you have a picture of what you want your kids to do and you feel the Lord kind of shifting that perspective on what his vision is for your children? Uh, the, the thing that I've been convicted about this lesson the Lord's been teaching me is leadership is guided by God. And I am so convicted by how often that spirit guidance actually comes through the body and what is convicting about it is i'm often i don't know what this says about me i'm like surprised not because i'm surprised that the spirit speaks through you but because i can get my head like down and i'm locked in and i think this is what i'm supposed to be doing and then the lord speaks through someone in our church so an example of that is i can get so locked in leading a bible study uh, at a small group and then suddenly Marissa will like drop a truth bomb about how reading scripture is about contemplation and not consumption. And that's what everyone remembers. And I'm like, thanks be to God that the Lord is speaking through people in our church, right? Because he, he has the words that he wants to share. Or we're thinking about how do we reach our city? And little do I know that the spirit is speaking to Zoe about preparing and hosting this date night to reach her son's classmates. And it's just been beautiful to see and be surprised and humbled that God is speaking through not just leadership, but he's speaking through his church, through his people. For the fun fact that we kept trying to do community nights and all Chelsea had to do was go, does people want to watch Elf? Yeah. Anybody interested in watching Elf? It's easily the biggest event we've ever done. And we did absolutely nothing to make any of that happen. It was great. Or it's just... I want to share another one too. Yeah. Amen. It was like three or four Sundays ago. It was right after his first Sunday. We had Isaac here, and Randy and I are feeling discouraged. And Amen's like out in the parking lot preaching to Randy about how we're rescuing him from fatherlessness. And I'm like, Holy cow, Amen! The Spirit is speaking through you. Let's and go. It's just so encouraging to have you guys in this family. Uh, number four, Jesus pushes purpose, not popularity. Uh, we. I'd say we, it could just be me. We are recovering addicts who are trying to overcome the temptation. Can you imagine if I left it there? We're recovering addicts. <laughs> we all kind of are. Uh, but we are over, trying to overcome the temptation to see winning solely through the lens of budget, attendance, baptisms, whatever number we try to measure. I think of Isaiah 41.10 where God's encouragement to Israel is that they would not anxiously look about them. 
Right? Look to the left or to the right. Hey, buddy. What's going on? Yeah, it doesn't know now. Four, Israel is being held by God's righteous right hand. And sometimes in ministry, uh, you can really feel like anxiously looking about you, right? There's a lot of temptation towards comparison. No one is immune to that or envy or anything like that. But for whatever reason, and this is so weird to me, in our yes to our part of the kingdom work of God in Delaware, this is the result of obedience. This room, right? This group of people. And if you had sat me down in seminary and been like, talk about the 10 things you want to see in a church, I would not have written any of this down, right? I was very much, I don't mean that as an insult. It's just, just like any of us, when you're starting a new thing, you've got this ideal in your head of exactly what it's going to be like. And it never happens that way, right? It's just, it's very difficult to get on the other side of that. In thousands and millions of moments of decisions, we are just doing our best to be faithful and listening stewards in a very imperfect way when we are brought to the consequences of the end of those decisions and we really like what we see. We like what's happening in this room. We like what's happening throughout the week. We like the conversations that are happening. We like the emphases we get to have. And if you were to compare numbers with other churches in Delaware and solely on that basis, right, that's the only thing, you could draw a lot of conclusions, right? And that's fine. But what you would miss out on in that moment, you would miss out on the unique things that God is doing in the lives of every person in this room. You would miss out on the unique stories that get to be told because of even the things that we're talking about during our testimony time of just this happenstance sort of interaction of all of these things and now we are here, right? And we're part of each other's lives. You can't make that happen. You can't manipulate it. And so all we can do and all we know how to do as leadership now, maybe this is like irresponsible, but all we know how to do is moment by moment ask the Lord, Lord, what are you doing now? Like, what is this? What do you want? What should we do next? That's all we, have. That's all we can do. And just see where that takes us and trust him. And we really hope, we really hope that that is faithfulness. Because we think it feels like trust. We like it. We hope it's faithfulness. At the very least, we really like it in comparison to what the alternative could be. And then here's the last one. Uh, and this is more organizational, I suppose. We really know it's God wants a kingdom HQ and not just church plants. To be honest, anyone in this room having been headquarters, kingdom headquarters, Kingdom hindquarters. Uh, anybody in this room who's been part of this church plant, you could plant a church. Believe it or not, uh, you could sign up for an LLL, what do you call it now? What is it? An LOC? LLC, LLC or whatever. 501c3 is what I was looking for. Thank you. You could sign up for that. You could gather a group of people and you could just be a church tomorrow. It's actually not that hard. What is hard is laying down that organizational reality and asking the Lord, God, what would it look like if you got your way in Delaware, Ohio, and how can we do it? And that's a Kingdom HQ. And the reason why we point that out, and Dallas Willard talks about this, out of that divine love, out of what he's given us, comes a desire for obedience and wholeness and justice and beauty and the borders of that we call God's kingdom where his will is enacted in Delaware and while it gets really easy to get caught up in all of the organizational intricacies all the stuff that we celebrate in church planting what we really like to pay attention to is where is God's will and love being made more central on account of his people right and our church, even if it, I made a joke this morning, this is our last service. It's not our last service. But let's say that it was our last service. We knew that for five years we were a kingdom HQ that changed Delaware through its people because people were changed, right? And so it becomes a vehicle for that. So if, whatever it's for families or businesses or workplaces or parks or third spaces, right? We have parents and neighbors, nonprofit workers, police officers, managers, pastors, coaches, teachers, organizational leaders, members of large teams, team leaders, big business, leaders of small teams and small businesses, whatever that is, 
Delco folks are all over the place making the love of God a more central thing in the city of Delaware. And so when we meet at Coffeeology, I wish the question you would have asked was, who here has worked at Coffeeology? And then a lot of people in the room. Uh, or restaurants or parks, local businesses, our homes, Aldi, Kroger, right? It doesn't matter. What that means is that God's love is being made more manifest because he has agents on the inside. And that's what we hope for as a kingdom, HQ. Yeah, I think just to piggyback off of that and to kind of wrap it up, the another way I think we could have worded that is God wants kingdom headquarters, not just a church Sunday service. And I think Cameron Williams, Amy Cooch, you guys were like two of the first to you you and your churches were of the first to demonstrate this to us that you recognize your churches recognize that you guys existed for something greater than yourself you were excited about what god was doing in delaware and you and your churches have supported us in presence encouragement and prayers likewise i hope that and i and i see among our people here that we recognize we exist for something greater than even a Sunday morning. When you begin to hear the stories of like what Haley's doing with her cheerleaders and you hear all the stories of what God's doing in your workplaces, neighborhood, the book club and Chris Perry's community, right? Um, there's things where God has sprinkled his disciples throughout our city. And I'm expecting even what five years from now we'll say, hey, look what God has done that he started that's happening right now right so thanks be to god for what he's doing in our city we're going to end with communion we're going to take communion together let me move this table nailed it just a little bit of juice we're going to end with communion together Stephen's going to go grill. He's got hot dogs and hamburgers to make. Wish him luck. I'm going to pray for us. And then, uh, hey, buddy. I'm going to pray for us. And then um, we're going to do communion together. Amy, if you want to come up and play some music in the background, that would be great. So would you guys join me in prayer and blessing as we get ready to enter into communion together? Mm. Lord, we're so thankful. We're thankful for your work. We're thankful for your word. We're thankful for the things that you've taught us and the things that are yet to be. Lord, as we finally celebrate all of this with communion together, as we consider what it means to praise you, would you instruct our hearts? Lord, would you give us everything that we need today? Would you remind us what it means to be one of the birds of the air or the flowers of the field? remind us as we get ready to take communion that on the night that Jesus was handed over to suffer and die, Jesus took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat, this is my body which is given to you, do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. And later he would stretch out his own arms upon the cross and offer himself in obedience to God's will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. And therefore, today, when we take communion, we are confessing the mystery of our faith, that Christ has died, that Christ is risen, and that Christ will come again. So today we offer the Lord thanksgiving and praise. Caroline's going to join me up here. She's going to have the bread, and I'll have the cup. Scripture would encourage you uh, to take a moment of reflection before you come forward to confess anything that might be on your heart, to pray in thanksgiving for what you have received, to anticipate the Lord's presence in your life. We celebrate communion through intention, which all that means is Caroline will have the bread, and you'll just grab a piece, you'll dip it into the cup, and you'll take it right there. 
and then you may go and sit down. Do you guys want to form, as you begin to come, if you want to form a line that goes this way, that would be awesome. Uh, so when you're ready, come forward. <laughs>